do something to connect with zero expectation. Having the ability to build relationships and maintain relationships is a super skill that is just going to make everything better. I've built all my businesses successfully about creating relationships. Don't always be the one asking. Be the one offering sometimes. If you don't reach out, you will never know. Business is personal. I connect with and I network with people. It is okay to not know the answer the first time. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Hi, my friend. I'm good. How are you? Rockstar as always. So, so much. let's dive into our five-part series. Yes. The yes. Power so of Relationships. I am so excited. I've been waiting to do this with you forever only because you are a massive connector of all people and I'm the same. And I think that, you know, I think we all innately have it inside of us, but it depends on what you do with that. Right. And to me, it's like, Oh, Chris, you know what? You got to do this or you got to meet this person. And I think you're very much the same. And I've built all my businesses. I would like to say fairly successfully about creating relationships. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think about, you know, creating relationships since it's your forte? Oh, so I like to think of it as my super skill or my magic trick. And mm -hmm. and I think that it's essential in any business. I mean, I my personal opinion is is that having the ability to build relationships and maintain relationships is is a super skill that is just going to make everything better everything so your personal life your business mm. life your i think that if you have the ability to really build true relationships and maintain true relationships that can make you more successful period in everything business personal doesn't matter um so i i think that's the key like for me those yes. relationships are the key and connecting people massive, massive that's a people whole... ask me all the time what is success watching two people you connected build something yeah you're Come like on. you're like Come that on. was my that was my yeah. baby right that was me seeing that vision of those people need to work together right absolutely and that is you know i always call whatever you want to call it i call it my superpower yeah you know secret sauce whatever people want to call it but you know, I remember back in the day, you know, people would hold things and contacts and everything so close to their yeah. chest. And I'm so thrilled that the last few decades have evolved in a way that, look, we are powerful in numbers, especially women, right? Yeah. And so connecting people and building the relationships, I consider them sort of one, but let's first talk about building relationships. And this is sort of something that, you know, people will come to me and say, you know, I don't understand, you know, you've got all these, you know, people and you've got your pack of this and pack of that. And, you know, I've gone to networking things and I'm like, okay, well, what did you do there? Well, I once went to, or I twice went to, and I'm thinking to myself, okay. And, and people maybe don't know, and that's really like, we're not here to poke fun at or whatever. We're no, here really no, no. to give people tips, but it's shocking to me that people would think after one or two sort of engagements that that's creating a relationship. You said something key, which I love, so many things I love about you, you know that, Chris, but what I love about you is you're kind of like, it's all about connecting personal yeah. and professional. Yeah. Because so how do you, let's say you want to have a, a friendship or an intimate relationship with somebody. You don't meet somebody once, you talk to them, you get to know them on a personal level. Forget about your personal or business ask. Get to know them, care about who they are, where they're from, do they have kids, do they have pets? Um, what are their aspirations? That's how you create a relationship. And so just to sort of let you go into this one is some people have a lot of social anxiety, mental health being in the forefront of sort of everything that we care about yep. is very is very key and is, in, is very important. So I always tell people that what you exactly said, that it's about creating that bond or that connection with the person and look at it like how you do personally. But more so, a really good thing that I tell my clients is come with three to five questions. You can have them on your phone if you have to go, you know, to the, excuse yourself and look at your questions if you don't memorize them. But do something to connect with Absolutely. zero expectation. What's your tips or what are some of your sort of yeah. magical power connecting things? 
So I love, I love how you said that, you know, you love when you hear individuals that say, I once did this. And so one of my favorite things that I hear all the time is I really want to get better at networking. And I go to all these networking events and, and then I'll ask, great. And, and how did you maintain that? And they're like, well, I went to the networking event. That's great. So you shook their hand and you met them. Hi, Adrian. Nice to meet you. Did you do anything after that? Well, I met them. Mm. And now what? And now you're going to call them and ask them for a favor after you haven't talked to them after you met them six months ago? Mm -hmm. That That's not how it works. There's maintenance involved. And maintenance, I don't say that as a bad word, like, oh, you got to put in work. No, maintain the relationship like you would a friendship, like you would a dating relationship. You don't just go on date one and then be like, okay, meet you at the altar. Like, you yeah. have steps in between. <laughs> like, And so business is like that. I have a friend of mine that says all the time, and I love this because... I identify with this for sure. He always says business is personal. Mm. And I love that because that's Same. the truth is that I personally, I identify and I, I connect with and I, I network with people, not with logos, not with a name brand, not with, the, with people. It's the so people important. as part of the business mm. that make me believe in the business. A hundred percent. And people are not buying into logos anymore. Doesn't matter if you're a multi-billion dollar brand. People want to know the people behind the million dollar, billion dollar yeah. brands or the mom and pa shop or the entrepreneur just starting out or yeah. the entrepreneur doing their second venture, you know, asking for millions of dollars or support. People want to know you. And I don't mean doing body shots on a bar and no. woohoo in Mexico, no, no. right? That There's a space for, for that as well. Yeah, yeah, there's a time and place. There's a there's space a for that. Yeah. But I think it's about, you know, who you are, what are your core yeah. values? Yeah. What impact are you looking to leave? Yes. What is your legacy going to be? And it sounds like big questions, but they're really not. You know, it Why can are be you here? Simple... Why are you doing what you're doing? Yes. Why, why do you believe what you believe in? Why is it important? Why, you know, maybe we believe in the same things. Maybe we want the same things. And so how easy is it to get on board with a business that says, I want what you want? Okay, well, then I'm in. Like, uh, that's 100%. Easy. Even, uh, silly, but even the way you and I connected Absolutely. and the way it was so ironic. And so I, I think we said it in our first podcast, but we'll continue yeah. sort of, you know, making us as an example where for some reason you came across my LinkedIn feed, then somebody else told me, oh, you've got to connect with Chris. She's so rock star. She's so much like you. You guys got to connect. I was like, yeah, yeah. And you were on my people to contact list. And when I contact people, I don't leave this big, long email saying all the reasons we should connect. It's like, hey, you know what? I think we've got the same vision, the yeah. same mission. If you're interested, let's chat. And it can be as simple as people don't respond. They yeah. say hell to the yeah, or they say no thank you, right? Yep. But what was ironic about you and I, I guess, and you can tell your side of it, because you reached out to me first. Yeah, so same deal. I saw you in my feed. You were connected with someone I was connected with. I made a comment on a post that you had shared with them, tagged in it, and I said, wow, this is amazing. I love this. I love everything about this post, this article. And the individual said, you got to connect with this person. Like the you and her are meant to speak. You've got to connect. So I reached out to you and I love, and same thing. I just reached out and said, listen, I think we have similar goals, similar visions, similar values. And I think we should connect. And your response was easy. Like, yes, please. Like, let's do this. Oh <laughs> like, yes. Rock star. Yeah. Exactly. Amazing. But and, you know, we should give a shout out to, if you remember who the gal was. I do. I... It's Susie York, our friend Susie Woo! York. I oh, love her. Okay, Susie. Incredible. And she is a master connector. I love oh, her. In insane. And Talk she... about someone supporting other human beings. That, I, that's what I'll say for Susie. She's just a supporter of human beings. She is. And she her intentions are so true. Yep. She's got a hustle like nobody's oh. business. Inspirational. Never... You want to hear a founder story, that's one to listen to. Absolutely. And yep. you know what? But to top it off, she gives back with zero yes. expectation. Yes. Yes. She is so busy 
and she'll never it never ceases to amaze me that she will message me even if it's just a one line text yep. hey you got to know this person or hey i want you at this event or hey can you and it's like those are the type of people and that's the only way that i can really kind of sum it up easily and i'm so glad that you brought her up is zero expectation if you yeah. go into this expecting to make a deal if you expect to have business which it may happen zero expectation put in the work put in your time be your true authentic self and beautiful things will come, right? I mean, Absolutely. even with you and I connecting, it could have been sort of like, yeah, you're cool, yeah, we're cool, we'll do this, we'll do that. But now, you know, we're doing podcasts, you're writing for the publication, we're doing a series. I think, you know, things are going to be unlimited. Yeah. And had we never made that one connection, had you been either too worried about reaching out, worrying about rejection, I was, I would have reached out to you regardless, so it would have happened, but you just were on it a little bit faster than I was. I just think, you know, Wayne Gretzky says, what, 100% of the shots not taken or 100% of the opportunities missed. Yeah. Yeah. Do you believe it's so that? true? It's so true. And and one of the pieces of advice I give all the time, because I get a lot, you were saying before about, well, I, you know, maybe I'm introverted, maybe I'm shy, it's harder. Mm. I always say like, network or connect or whatever you call it your way what works for you just but don't give up on it and do it your way so if you're only great at talking maybe one-on-one -on -one to someone then do it that way if you're not great walking into a room full of 100 people that's okay you don't have to be good at that you can be good at just reaching out one-on-one -on -one, but reach out like you said take that chance take that shot reach out because you know what i've reached out to a lot of leaders in a lot of different industries and in a lot of different businesses and uh, you know some huge on the scale of reach and impact and and some maybe i'm the only one who knew who they were and that's okay yeah. but not one has said like no i'm not interested in ever speaking to you like Ex well exactly and, and what's you know the worst if they did I was just going to say, right. let's say worst case, they were like, oh my yeah. gosh, you know, absolutely. I would never, first of all, like yeah. you said, in all my years in business, nobody has ever said that. The only no. thing is maybe they don't respond, <clears throat> which sure. I don't necessarily agree with, but you know, if they're that big, maybe they're not the ones managing their socials or whatever, sure. however you've yeah. reached out. I believe that emails sometimes get lost, all of that stuff. But you know, it goes back to sort of what I do about the rock star confidence, which is creating confidence, believing in yourself. Forget about the external stuff. Although, and we'll call it networking, I call it connecting, whatever yep. the creating yep. relationships, whatever. Because as soon as you say networking, people are like, yeah, no. I, I know. Right? The scary word. Like, I know, I know. Yeah. I'm like, you know, it's, anyways, that's a whole nother conversation. But, you know, if you don't reach out, you will never know. And yeah. if you do reach out and something great happens, well, then what? Yeah. yeah. How beautiful I, I agree is with that? that? I agree with that 100%. And I think that you got to take those chances. Um, the other the other piece of advice I was once given about connecting and, and, and it was from a leader and it was just, it really sat with me. And it, it's similar to what you were saying. Like you, you were just saying, you've got to put in the maintenance. You've got to give back. You've got to have no expectation. I love that. And this leader said, you know, don't always be the one asking. Be mm. the one offering sometime, right? Mm. And so, like, we were using Susie York as an example. I mean, better chocolate, Susie York. If you're not following, if you're not, if you're not following that story, for, I mean, the product's a whole other level. But if you're not following her story and her journey, you should be. But talk about someone who doesn't just reach out for the ask who reaches out with the offers, who reaches out to say, hey, I want to help others. How can I help others in their journey? How can I help others, you know, be founders? How can I help others in their business? How can I help others learn from what I've already been through? Um, and I think you can do that, whether you're an entrepreneur or working in corporate. Like, it doesn't matter if you're, yeah, it doesn't matter or if you're changing, yeah, things in your community. Like you yeah, said, you have to. it doesn't to, matter. It's just the hustle, it's the yeah. her drive. I always say to her, I'm like, if we could bottle that yeah. and sell it, we'd all be like retired, right? in, you know, a couple know. years from now. But I know. 
You know, the other thing that you touched on that is so important is is not expecting anything. And I'm yeah. just going to share this quick story with you. So um, when I started the whole I Am Unbreakable and I started reaching out to leaders and whatnot, people were would message me back, well, how much? How much what? how much time like it need and they're like no like how like what are you selling me and i'm like it's a so i learned quickly i had to say well no this is a media request it's by invite only so then i got to that point and then people would say okay let's have a meeting and we'd sit down and they'd be like so what is it that you want and i was like uh i i had no answer yeah you're like i i don't know where to go with this yeah i don't know like are we taught like do you want to give me a chocolate bar (laughs) i didn't know what and it wasn't sue's work of course but anyways i was just i was sort of taken aback because i think that's still very much the mentality it's like well what does she want or what does he want you know out of this and so my whole mission is lifting and empowering people the business side of it of course is there and will come and will evolve the way it's evolving. And I'm going to share a story near the end about sort of asking continuously, right? Yeah. And sort of creating the relationship. But I'm curious to know what your thought is. Why do you think people think that there's like an exchange here? Because I'm just looking at featuring somebody and they're right away kind of like, okay, well, what is it that you want? Why do you think so, that is? So here's my thought is that, and it's funny. So, so if, if any, anybody follows me, they see that all I do is share, you know, small businesses, entrepreneurs, here's what other yeah, people are that. doing. Like I'm all about sharing. Here's what's going on. Here's what's happening in my network. And I get questions all the time. It always blows me away. Random questions from random people who will reach out to me and say like, oh, did you share that? Cause because you're, you know, get a commission or did you share that because you you're an affiliate or did you and I'm like, no, I shared it because aren't they great? Like, look at what look at their product, look at their service, look at their, whatever it is. Like, no, I shared it because I love that podcast or I shared it because that's a really powerful, like, you know, message or whatever it is. And yes, there are some products that I share to say, I just love the product or I love the people who are producing the product. Like, but I just share and and it always shocks me when someone asks like, Oh, why'd you share that? And I'm like, why, why wouldn't you? Like if you, if, yeah. if you've got a friend, a family, a whatever it is, and they've got a product, a service, a podcast, a, a message, a, a, an article, they've written a book, they've written whatever it is. My question is why wouldn't you share it? Yeah. I don't understand. I know. Why we wouldn't highlight the, the people script. around you. Flip the script for sure. But so I guess you're kind of miffed too, right? Because yeah, I don't like, really I don't know. It. I don't get I, it. I can, the only thing I can think of is that it is sort of an still an old school mentality where mm-hmm. it's like, well, what do you want from me? And then when I was posed this question by a few people, I just, you know, and they're like, well, you know, we've got to know what your ask is. And I said, well, I don't have an ask. But if you yeah. have a recommendation where you feel that the podcast or the publication could benefit, then you could give that back to me because I don't know, I don't have an ask. I like, this is what I do. Right. And so just to sort of take that one step further, I think that if, and when you create these relationships, if it's done in an authentic way and you get asked a question that, you know, you and I here are live as in we're not editing anything. And we're both like, I don't really have the answer for that. It's okay to say that it's okay to say, you know what, I didn't really think about what my ask is. However, if you're open to, you know, what you think or the suggestions or, I mean, not everybody's going to ask that particular question, but don't you think having that open, honest dialogue is part of what creates the relationship? Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's what I'll say about not knowing the answer. And, and I, I really stand by this. It is okay to not know the answer the first time. Mm, important. So when someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, it's okay to say, hey, that's a great question. And I don't know the answer because I haven't either been approached by that before or it's not something I thought of or it wasn't important to me, but I now see it's important to you. Mm. And so that's okay the first time. I think going forward, now you should be prepared. And if you're not, if you get asked the same question again, and you still don't know the answer, now I think that's on you. Oh, that's that's powerful. And that's true. Right? 
because you know what? Sometimes, I mean, look, I still get asked questions and I've been in business for several decades. I still get asked questions that are really interesting. So I would also recommend being curious. Why are people asking me this question? Is there a hole in my business? Should I be asking this question or should I be giving them this information so they don't need to ask the question, right? Yeah. And I think that that's all about sort of evolution, innovation, and as the world changes on many different levels, right? Um, You know, now even with AI and technology and everything, I think we really, as business owners, entrepreneurs, founders, whatever, and even if you are working for a corporation, we need to be informed. But without sort of going kind of off to that, because as I said, you and I, we've got four more on this series and then another five to do that'll touch on all that. What do you think, because I feel from sort of a perspective of creating business relationships, I think a lot of those business relationships, I have some beautiful relationships, right? And they turn, they do turn personal. And I remember, oh, don't ever mix business and personal, you know, keep things, you know, close to your chest. I think people have to adapt now to the fact that we're already kind of constricted with, I'll go, the screen. Right. So if we can, we're connecting in different ways, like open your heart, be vulnerable, be uh, empathetic, be sincere, be authentic. So what do you think? Like, do you feel that people should be open to turning like people have said, oh, and I've even said it to you. Hey, when you're in town, we're going for lunch, we're going for dinner, we're going for coffee, whatever you have time for. I think that's a great thing. What, what's Absolutely. Your so, that? so here, here's what I think about it is, I will say that while I agree that business is personal, I believe in that business mm. is personal. You have to bring to be successful. You have to bring your authentic self to that relationship. And and if you're bringing your authentic self, you don't have to work hard at being whoever you're trying to be because you're just being yourself. So it's not as hard because you're just being you. How easy is that? Just be you. You bring that authentic self to the game, whatever that is. Like whatever your business is, bring yourself. So I do believe business is personal, but I will say that I do think there is an importance and maybe it's not the same thing as keep business and personal separate, but I do think there's an importance to shutting off, to having a boundary of Mm -hmm. this moment has nothing to do with business. Now, to me, that doesn't mean that the relationship relationship doesn't so as an example we have said when i come to town we're going to go to dinner whatever it is you know what we're going to go to dinner and we're going to talk and we're going to talk about our kids and we're going to talk about what a crazy life we have with four kids each and we're going (laughs) to but we're not going to sit there working on strategy and working out deals that's not what we're going to do because we're going to take a moment to just build that relationship i love that and so i think i think it's different i think that there is a line there is you want there to be you don't want to just work all the time like you you want there to be a line but you don't want to be a different self or a different version of yourself when you come to work and why at least i don't want to be yeah oh me neither (laughs) me neither but i think sometimes people have to put on a persona you know maybe they're going through something and all that you know kind of fake it till you make it and things are really shitty and i don't want to tell you my life is about to blow up in that incident's fine, but I also feel you could always, you know, say, hey, I can't do the podcast today because, or I can't meet you today because I've got something that's come up. Could we reschedule? You could say it in a way where you don't need to sort of barf out your whole entire, yeah. you know, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you wanted to, and if you've built that closeness and you want to say, hey, you know what? I've been going through some hard times. Yeah. I'm good now, but that's why I had to cancel. I had nothing to do with you. I think there's, you know, sort of value there too. But what do you think, why do people put on this persona that like, I've met people that are so incredible. And then I've met some people that I sort of scratch my head and I, and I, I never sort of number one, judge a book by its cover. I always give it several times to meet somebody because like you said, sometimes people are like nervous and they're on and they're whatever. And it's just, and then I get to know them and it's like, wow, when I met you, you were such a different version of you. Be more. And they're like, well, I was nervous. So I, I'm like, but 
this is so wonderful. You are such a wonderful person. So why do you think, Chris, that people put on that mask or that persona, would you no, say? I, I think there's, there's kind of two sides to that. I will say that the first thing is, is that I think we all have that one friend that, that like, people say like, oh God, they're, they're super negative or they're super cold or they're super, and you go, no, they're not. They're not. Like, if you just knew them, mm. if you just knew them. And so like, do I think they're putting on a mask? Maybe unintentionally. Maybe that's them putting up their boundaries, putting up their guard, putting up whatever, for whatever reason. And maybe that's mm. something from their past. Maybe that's an anxiety. Maybe it's a nervousness. Maybe it's whatever it is. Uh, we all have that friend that they're, you're like, trust me that, they're amazing. Mm. They just need to ease into it. Um, and, and so I think sometimes it's unintentional. And so I love that when you said like, well, I never go off the first time, you know, give it a chance, let them warm up, let them get comfortable. Um, so I, I agree that I think that's important because not everybody is just, you know, and can that comfortable in, in speaking, whether it's one person or 12 people, or it doesn't matter, right? Like not everybody, I, you're going to love this word that I, I was just going to use roomtastic. Not everybody's roomtastic. Ooh, roomtastic. So I, heard this word, I just want to dance to the song, word, you know, right? I heard this word the other day. I was, I was listening to a, a leadership uh, conference and the woman that I was speaking with, she said, Roomtastic, and she defined it as those individuals that can just walk into a room and just own the room, like just they just own the room. They shine. You can see it. It's where their their superpower lies. And I thought, I love that word. I I'm, love that word. I think I'm gonna start using that. Right, too. roomtastic. So I said, it makes me want to dance. That's my superpower, roomtastic. I can just walk in, but that's my comfort zone. Yes. That doesn't mean that's everybody. So the other side of things is I think you're right. I think there are still some people that have this, I don't know if you, you know, a mask, a guard or whatever it is. This is how I am at work. This is how I am at home. And it's very different. It's very different. It's and why they do it. I mean, I think they, I think that they probably think that that's professionalism to them. Mm. I don't know that I agree. Which is them. why we're doing this podcast. Yeah. And telling people just be that authentic person who, because there's a core of everybody that's the same, whether you're in business, whether you're in personal, whether you're in a hockey rink or a ballet studio, there's this core person that has these values. And I think you can show those in a professional way, right? Yeah. I was just going to say, like, I could say that the two of us, we are unique we are definitely not like anyone else. We are willing to talk about what's on our mind. We're a little louder than most, but very professional. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't think that professional means quiet and, you know, conservative. And I don't think those are, you know, one in the team. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I will say is that I think that it sounds like a lot of work to me. It sounds like a me lot and of someone work else, me like too. me trying to pretend that I'm super quiet and reserved. <laughs> and like, that See, sounds yeah, well, exhausting that will never to happen me. with you. Yeah. That sounds exhausting to me. Like trying to pretend that sounds mm -hmm. exhausting to me. And I just don't know that I would be effective. I don't know that I could be my best self if I had to pretend to be reserved and quiet and have no opinion. No. You know what? It's so funny because you know my my creative mind is going is that we should try this. You and I should film, get the crew to film us <laughs> trying, trying to be this quiet, reserved. Yeah. You and I would be like, I don't it know. It be better like, be a ten minute podcast that time. Like, <laughs> that's all I can. No, give. I'm talking like a day in the life of. Oh, trying oh. to be quiet. A whole day, I don't, I don't know. She's like, I just, yeah, I don't I'm already know. tired thinking about it. I don't think I could do it. it. I don't think well, I could do it. I, you know what? And, and we shouldn't have to. And so sort of, I mean, you, this is so great. And thank you for sharing as much as you have. Um, and I just want to ask you one other thing and I'll, yeah. I'll go, I'll go first. Um, I want to share something, you know, with people that think that this comes easy. So I was the girl, I was always outspoken, but never necessarily in front of people. So I always tell people this story and they're like, what? So early on, 
I was, so I'm talking really early on. In high school, I used to be the girl that would skip when speeches were yeah. around. And people would be like, why? But you have so much to say. And I'm like, yeah, to you, but I'm not going to, you know, get in front of whatever. Yeah. And people would be like, come on, come on. And then obviously I started, you know, with the, um, being a founder and I'd have to go into a boardroom and people would be like, oh, you killed it. You rocked it. And I'm like looking at them. And it took me a while to tell people this little did they know, like I threw up the night before, probably the morning yeah. of, um, I was like nervous as anything, but then you show up and you get through it. And uh, the more you sort of desensitize yourself to showing up, right, on the things you're nervous about, I feel that eventually you get through it and yeah. you're going to be a rock star at it. So some, and I, I hope you're, I don't know, maybe you came out of the womb like the way you are. No. But, no. You know, we all have our, let's just say, uh, things that we have to overcome, like the struggles part of the story. It's obstacles, it's, you know, struggles, whatever. But, um, you know, I feel that if somebody has anxiety, social anxiety, and I know firsthand what that was and what that is, even if you were to go on to, let's say, a summit without turning your camera on, step one, right? Yeah. Do a few of those till you're comfortable. Step two would be turn your camera on. And then as you go through this, then, you know, talk, then offer to talk, join a book group, then show up to, you know, a book group or some kind of, you know, connecting event. And so I think you can start off in small chunks. And that's what worked for me. And look, yeah. here, here we are talking on, you know, worldwide. So there you go. So how about you, Chris? So it's so funny. I just had this conversation with my husband the other day because we are, we have, like I mentioned, we have four kids. So one of our children is talking about what they're going to take in their courses at school. So we were chatting about what we took in high school, my husband and I. And, and he said, you must have been in drama. And I was like, no, I never took drama. He's like, what? You yeah. never took drama? I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, that's what you what, do. Like, what do you mean? Still my beating heart. And, and I said, no, there was no way I was getting on a stage in front of my high school. Are you kidding me? And he's like, pardon? He's like, yeah, you he's get like, on stages what? and speak in front of hundreds and thousands of people all the time now. What do you mean you wouldn't get on stage? And I was like, absolutely not in high school. Absolutely not. And do you know what it was? It was confidence. That's all it was. It was confidence. In high school, I was not confident. In high school, people were mean, and and they still and, are. They still are, but now I'm confident, and I don't care. Yes, I know. <laughs> I meant like in high school. I know. I meant in that's high school, different. but yeah. So you think it, and you're right. But you know, I wonder who is confident in high school. There, not a lot of people, because there's so many changes. You know, hormonally, physically, mentally, yeah. and all that fun stuff, right? I ne I mean, I had great years, sort of grade ten onwards, but. I struggled, I got bullied a lot, and but you find your way. And when people say, talk about confidence, they're always like, oh, you know, rock star confidence, what is that? Like, it sounds so complex, and I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, like, I just, like, how do I obtain it? Which is why I'm starting, you know, obviously, uh, I think it's going to be launching on International Women's Day, Amazing. a rock star confidence course, but it really is so simple. And you, yeah. you tell me what you think confidence is, but to me, it's really simple and it's believing in yourself. Uh, absolutely, it. it's believing in yourself, but I will say it has to start with understanding yourself. Oh, that a hundred. So, so yes, understand 100%. what everyone's got superpowers. Everyone's got the things they're super good at, everyone. Mm -hmm. It might not be the same as mine though. Like I might be super good at one thing and you're really bad at it. And that's okay because you have superpowers that I'm not really good at. And so yeah. we can both be confident just because I'm good at one thing and you're not, we can both be confident knowing that we have our own superpowers. So I think it's important to really get to know yourself and understand what you bring to the table. Because when you know what your superpower is, you can feel your value. You know what you bring to the equation. And so you can be confident in that that you are confident that here's the value that I hold, here's the value I can bring to others. The other thing I will share that is absolutely essential for confidence is boost other people's. Mm. 100%. If you are the person that walks in a room and says, hey, you look great, hey, your hair looks awesome, hey, I listened to your podcast, I read your book, I tried your product, 
I booked your service, whatever it is, and it was amazing. Guess what? Everyone around you is going to feel valuable, is going to feel like they belong, is going to feel positive and confident, and when everyone around you feels that way, you will too. If that everyone is awesome. around you is looking for, oh, that person didn't do their hair today, that person, guess what? You're thinking that way too. You're like, oh, what are they gonna, what are they gonna pick apart on me? Mm. Because they're all picking each other apart. Or you're saying, come in, and I'm, you know, I'm all about that is come in and elevate everybody. And elevate that everybody. is that is massive. I think that sort of is it, you know, the way that I have framed sort of the rock star confidence. That yeah. is sort of the finishing piece of obtaining it, but to maintain it, you, you know, become from a mentee to a mentor. Same. And then you go and lift as many people as you possibly can That's as right. well. But when I, when people talk about confidence, they, they make it like they've got to, you know, do this and they've got to do that. And yes, you've got to heal your inner child. You've got you know, your therapy, yeah. you've got your whatever. I understand all of that, but I think confidence is when you're in the pooper and things are the worst they could ever be, just believing in yourself that you're going to be okay through it all. That's confidence. Yeah. You yeah. don't know how, you might not know the how, but you know the why and your why is what you essentially live for. And if it is for your legacy, for your business, for your children, for all of the above and then some, let it be that. But just know that your confidence does come from having your own back. It's not that it's not great that you've got my back and these five people yeah. have my back. It's about you've got your back. Yeah, and that's where I yourself. think confidence yeah confidence comes from and you're going to mess up you're going to go on a stage or trip over something i know everybody's worst nightmare but you know you're going to forget a line you're going to have to you know text sh stuff's going to happen but you've got the confidence to know you've got this that's, absolutely and i will say to me is sort of the core of it all yeah confidence is in spite of like in spite of my past, in spite of my screw up, in spite of my mistake, in spite of my bad day, in spite of my bad luck, whatever it is, I can still do it. So that's, that's confidence. And like, you know what, when they, you say the worst nightmare for everybody tripping on the stage, call it out. I, that's what I do. I get on the stage and the first thing I usually say is like, Okay, here, like, here we go. Ready for the ride? Like, I've got ADHD, so who knows where this is going to go? Like, let's, you know, just follow along. Instead of getting up there and just being so nervous that I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm going to miss a sentence. I'm going to forget a line. I'm going to, nah, just get up there. This is me. This is how it's going to go. And you know what? I might miss a line, but I guarantee you, you're going to get something out of it. I love that. And see, it's like you you humanize everything because when people see you and oh she's this rock star she's confident you know what what you do professionally and whatnot she heads up all these things people get nervous but as soon as you get on the stage and i do the same thing i am huge about laughter to yeah. me it's like i can usually make everybody or anybody laugh in like the worst of situations you know people will call me with the private investigation thing and say, you know, my husband, you know, has just cleared out all our bank accounts and left me for a 20 year old uh, assistant or whatever the case may, whatever their story yeah. is. And I'm yeah. like, but you still have your car, right? So you can get yeah. bucks. and they're like, okay, I'm trying to be serious. Like they're laughing through yeah. like their yeah. hyperventilating tears. They're like, I so needed that. And sometimes it just is making that again, that connection with people yeah where I'm human and you do that getting on stage going, okay, well, this is the way it's going to go. So yeah. ready, it's right? It's not going to be perfect, but we're going to do it together and it's, I we're going to get to the end and it's going to be valuable. Just hang on for the ride. Like, <laughs> that, you know, what is it? sit down, be quiet and hang on or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That Hands awesome. and arms in the vehicle while yeah. in motion. Like just, <laughs> Just we're, hang on. we're going, we're going. Well, yeah. I love that. You know, you and I can go on and on and on forever, sadly, until next week, which this will be a five part series. So super excited. Oh, excited. Love to of hanging on for the ride. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> With both of us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Woohoo. I know. <laughs> I love you to pieces, sweetie. Thank you right so much. You. And stay tuned for next week for the hour of building relationships.